did the thing. Verse 13, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And honestly, who cares, right? As a lady went to the door, right? But we hear here that her name is Rhoda. Don't forget that. When she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told him, uh, told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. When they had opened the door, they saw him. They were astonished. But he beckoning unto them with his hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he pardoned and went into another place. Dear Heavenly Father, would you move in the next few moments, God? We believe with our hearts that our miracle is at the door. God, I ask that you would help us to seize the moment. God, help us to realize that there is work to be done on our part. God, there is a moving that must happen to find your miracle. There's a moving that must happen in our hearts, God, to allow your spirit to fall in the way that you see fit. Let it be in this house tonight. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated with anything that happens that is worth dealing with, with any situation that is worth achieving. There has got to be effort put out. There has got to be energy exerted. There must be. Anything that's worth anything has been through a process of some type. Most of them painful. Most of them hard and trying. We had uh, a, quite a happening in California just a few months ago. Uh, now it's been about a year and a half ago, so it wasn't a few months ago. If I say the other day, it might be uh, a last year, so you figured that out about me already. We had a young man by the name of Tommy Caldwell who came to Yosemite, uh, uh, the area of Yosemite National Park. And he decided that he would climb the Dawn Wall, which is on the edge of El Capitan. The Dawn Wall stands 3,000 feet tall. It has 32 pitches or 32 rope lengths of free climbing, of climbing. Free climbing is the way that Tommy Caldwell decided he would climb it. The Dawn Wall had never been free climbed before. Free climbing simply means using one's hands and feet only to ascend a rock's natural features. Employing ropes and other gear only to stop from falling. Tommy Caldwell would climb a, a rope's length and then he would drill in and sleep overnight. But the next morning he would begin to climb again, completely free climbing the, the, the face of the Don Wall. The Don Wall is one of the hardest pitches that you can, uh, can climb. And I thought, I thought I wrote a few more details about it. The Don Wall in some places are more than 45 degrees backwards. Tommy Caldwell and his buddy decided they would climb. And in 32 days, it was just a little bit more than that, Tommy Caldwell and his buddy reached the top of the dock wall. Today's day is, is different than any other, and they had solar battery chargers, and they were able to tweet out at night and, 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 and document their travels and their, their climbing. And, and did you know that Tommy Caldwell and his buddy had to keep their fingertips just rough enough to hang on to the edge of the Don Wall before us and in preparation to climbing the Don Wall every day wake up and take sandpaper and begin to work their fingertips their fingertips had to have calluses thick enough to hold their weight brother Dathan but not to split out they had a couple days where they couldn't climb at all because they started to find that they were having splits on the tips of their fingers it's an amazing journey. I watched it. I watched it closely. People sat in the, the valley there and watched them climb day after day. Their family came day after day and watched them. They said if one of their fingertips were to split out, it would be the same as, a, as a, a vehicle at NASCAR having a blowout. It took effort. It took work. It took energy. These men knew exactly what had to be done. I thought it's so interesting. And, and, and they reached the top. And I remember on the radio and, and no doubt on television. I, I just heard it on the radio. But they were talking so much. And they, they were interviewing him so excited. And I, I began to research these guys. Tommy Caldwell just a few years ago cut his finger off in a construction accident. He climbed the face of the Dawn Wall with nine fingers. Missing his pointer finger. Which he... Whenever he cut it, he went in and they said, you know, we can put it back on. And he said, all right, put it back on. They said, we'll put it back on, but you're not going to have feeling in the tip of it. And he said, 
forget it, take it off because I got to go back to climbing. But he climbed the top of the dawn, all the way to the top. 39 days, I think it was, that he climbed the top of it. But he did it and he prevailed and he worked and he struggled. And anything we do is going to take some effort. Amen. Amen. We read this story tonight. Amen. We remember this story. We understand where we're at in the story. And, and we understand that the prayer of the church was being made. And they were having a, a prayer meeting. And they, 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 they knew that they were in dire days. They'd already had one murder. And, and they were fixing to find out that Peter was going to be killed. And they were saying, God, we've got to have your will and your way in this situation. Amen. It sounds like us in America. It sounds like the church in America. I believe that we've seen some reprieve from uh, God in some of our political realms. And just about the time we feel like things are getting better, it seems like uh, the rugs pulled out from under you. And, and here's another ruling. And here's another uh, misstep. And, and you, just, you just move here to there. And you're trying uh, to, to cry out to God. And, and in California a few years ago, they gave us the opportunity to go to the ballot box and, and vote whether we believe marriage should be between a man and a woman. And, and I remember Remember, we went and we voted and we and we 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 uh, worked and we strove and and we we bo- we voted it down. Only a few months later to find out that the the Ninth Circuit Court there in California re- per- uh, repealed our vote. So two or three years later, we went back to the ballot box and they put it back. And still, we did it again. We 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 voted it down. And they overturned it again. I'm telling you, these are the days we live in. We live in a day of tumult. We live in a day of of surge, of up and down. Uh, We live in a day of, of, of up one minute and down the next moment. Amen. But we live in a day when we need to understand that we're going to have to see the will of God move in the house of God for the things in our nation to turn around. You know this. This isn't uh, rocket science to you. You understand that the White House isn't going to turn America around. You understand that the Congress can't uh, uh, delegate and and, and regulate what we're going to do and and give us revival back in America. You understand that the jail cells are not going to turn America back to God. But it's going to be when we have the moving of the Holy Ghost in our churches. That begins to flow like the rivers of God that will cause men and women, number one, to quit sinning, and number two, to love God listen if the people in America that claim Christianity would quit sinning we would have revival sinners are supposed to sin folks that's what they are amen but Christians aren't amen we are to gain to get together and worship God and seek his face but the problems we have are the struggles from within where we think we can get by and we can edge out and we don't have to be committed to what's going on but I'm telling you tonight I came to preach to somebody that we need to align ourselves to allow God to move in the way God wants to move hallelujah they begin to pray they sought the face of God I think this prayer meeting went a lot like a lot of ours do where you start hot and heavy and everybody kind of gets worn out a little bit and pretty soon they're just kind of pacing the floor and and, oh Jesus help us and I've been in some of those prayer meetings where you get a little bit worn out but I want to tell you if you're not careful sometimes we come to God with our petitions but we petition God in areas that we aren't really sure he's going to live up to. Hear me. Hear me, I think there was a lot of people in the prayer meeting that was praying that Peter would be released, but they thought at the best maybe that that Herod would just change his mind and let him go or, or not kill him, but hold on to him. You hear me? You hear me tonight? Amen. We have done this for years and years and years. Listen, I've sat on a church pew all my life, and I've seen people, and they come, and they just want the meager, the meager, bare elements of God when we should be asking for so much more. Listen, we just want people to, say our name and remember us when instead we should be sitting up on the edge of our bed saying I'm going to get out of here I'm going to be in service tonight amen listen here everything's going the wrong way but I'm going to step up and believe God to do something that only God can do I've sat in churches and heard men that were prophets and the first one the the, the easiest go to is oh there's somebody here with back pain yeah You live in the obese society of America. Somebody in here is wagging back pain around. You better believe it. (laughs) Amen. Amen. We could start a jazzercise class and probably eliminate that. You hear me tonight. Amen. We, we, We don't need to come to God and ask for birthday cake. 
This is our problem. We've got to the place where we have, we've just relegated God down to nothing. Lord, would you help my car start? Lord, would you help me make it one more time? God, would you, listen here, we need to be to the place where we stand up on our feet and say, God, there are mountains that need to be moved, and you are the mountain mover, and I'm going to stand right here until it's out of my way. <laughs> listen, we live in a day of evil. We live in a day of darkness. These people that are out here pushing their agendas against the church, you hear me? They are not people you can sit down and reason with. They're not people that you can go and stick your finger in their nose, up their nose, and not up their nose, but at their nose. How's that? You can't just point at them and say, listen here, you're wrong and you're going to hell. And they're going to say, whoa, 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 my bad. It's not going to happen. These people are hardened in their sins. Hallelujah. But I do remember the story of Rahab and those spies. And I remember how she told those spies. Listen here. When we heard how God brought you across the Red Sea. Amen. Our hearts didn't melt within us. They were hardened by the sins of the world. But the power of God is great enough to move mountains. The power of God is great enough to meet you in your time of need. And give you the miracle you could only dream of Hallelujah. would to God we would, we, would, we would desire a miracle that only God could do would to God that we would believe he will do what he says he would do Hallelujah. I would to God that somebody would get a little pressing on the pastor a little bit. I've seen men and women in our church come and they get so excited about the things of God, they almost drive mom and dad crazy. Amen. But in every situation, if you let them go long enough, all of a sudden you see the hand of God begin to move in a way you never thought he would move before. We had a little lady in our church got so deep in the spirit of God one Sunday morning before church. We came in, we sit down, we do a little opening before Sunday school. The power of God hit her in the corner of the altar. She got up and she began to preach. You hear me? It wasn't her because she is no preacher. But she began to preach the word of God. Amen. She was so under the burden of God. People begin to fall in the altars. People begin to give their hearts and their lives to God. Amen. I'll never forget it. It was 2 or 3 o'clock before we got out of service that afternoon. And you've been in those long services where the preacher ain't got quitting since. And you get to the one thirty, and you're like, good grief. We could have left an hour ago. I wouldn't have missed anything. But this wasn't that service. This was a service where God was touching young people. And God was calling them into the ministry. And God was changing people's desires. And God was putting homes back together and people were getting changed my God let us ask God to do something we've never seen before and have the gumption to believe that he'll do it Rhoda I don't know if Rhoda was red hot in fire prayer or if she was the one marching around the edge of the prayer meeting saying oh Lord help him oh Lord help him oh Jesus oh Jesus I don't know but let me tell you what Rhoda missed. The greatest opportunity of her life. You hear me? The miracle was at the door. This is the part that we had the hardest time believing. This is the part we have the hardest time grasping. Rhoda's walking through and all of a sudden she hears the knock. Nobody else hears it. But Rhoda hears it. She hears the knock at the door. And she looks out and lo and behold, there he is. Hallelujah. It's Peter. Listen, we're in a red hot prayer meeting asking God to release this man who's about to be killed right after the, the holiday, after the festival. He's about to die. This is what everybody's praying for. And lo and behold, here he is at the door and he's knocking. And Rhoda had the opportunity to reach out and open the door and grab him by the hand and walk in with the goods. The Bible says she got excited. For happiness, for joy. She ran in and said, Peter's at the door. Now I want to make sure we understand tonight that we need to reverence the Holy Ghost. I believe there's times of joy and dancing and shouting. I believe it's important. But the church world has ran right past a holy reverence from God. You hear me? I want you to hear me well. The church world has ran right past worshiping God and the beauty of His holiness. 
We have ran right past getting in an altar and praying and fasting and weeping and crying between the porch and the altar. We've gone past the part about the clean hands and the pure heart. We don't care anymore about ascending to the heel of the Lord because those are the only ones that are going to get there. Those that have clean hands and a pure heart, those are the only ones that will ascend. That's right. We ran right past it. I'm talking about the church in the United States of America. We have gotten so excited about just being excited, but that's not good enough. You hear me? I'm going to tell you right now, there's NFL fans that are excited tonight because their particular team won the game this afternoon, and they're excited, and they're happy. We're not to come and celebrate Jesus. We're come to worship Him in the beauty of holiness and put Him in a place where He can do something He's never done before. That's not popular. But I'm telling you tonight, somebody's miracle is at the door. Come on, I'm going to tell you tonight, somebody's miracle is at the door. Hallelujah. Somebody's miracle is at the door. Listen, while they were praying, while they were asking God to do what he could do, Peter was already released. God was already moving. I need that water. Oh, it's up here. He put it up here for me. Right here. Told you I'd forget it. While they were seeking God, Brother Moreno, Peter was already walking the streets as a free man. I want you to hear me. Amen. Some of you have sat here for years and years and prayed for the same thing. Some of you have sat here for a long time and in the back of your mind you think, wouldn't it be great if God would? But I want to tell you, God already has. What he's waiting is for somebody, amen, that he's given them the opportunity to reach out and do something out of their own character and reach for the door and open it up and let God be God. Amen. He's not waiting. He's not holding you at bay because he doesn't like you. He's not stopping you because he don't think you're ready. He's just waiting for somebody to say, God, I believe it. She was so happy. She ran in there and they said, you're mad. You're crazy. California, they wear these shirts. They may wear them in Texas. It says, you mad, bro? Anybody seen those? You mad, bro? I want to have one made for this sermon right here. I'm going to put it on. It says, I ain't mad, bro. That's what I want to preach about. I ain't mad, bro. Uh-uh. I ain't mad. She walked in there. The reason why they thought she was mad, I want you to hear me tonight. There's only one reason why they thought Rhoda was mad. Because she didn't have Peter. Brother Johnson, she didn't have the goods. Because she had prayed for it. She had seen it. But Brother Moreno, when it took time and faith to step out and open the door, she was just so happy she turned around and ran off and left Peter on the other side of the gate. I want you to hear me tonight. The reason people sit outside of our church pews, our church houses, and they say, oh, look at those people. They think they're better than everybody else because they got standards and they get together three times a week and the, the young people just line up and do what Brother Tucker asked them to do. They think they're better than everybody. Let me tell you right now, they're sitting around saying those people are mad, but we are not mad, bro. Uh-uh. I'll tell you why they think we're mad, Brother Johnson. It's because we have got to produce the goods. Let it be in the house of God that we would realize the miracle is waiting for us. What we need is young people who will spend time in the altar until they can walk to the gate and let the miracle come in. The miracle's at the door. Somebody's miracle tonight is at the door. And you've been sitting around mad. Everybody's saying you're crazy. You are off your rocker. You have no idea. You, you're insane. You just keep rattling on about this and that because you've been saying it for year after year. You've been coming and asking the pastor to lay hands on it. You've been asking to pray for it. And we have a heavenly father in heaven that would say if you would go to the gate, I have sent your miracle. It's there. Let faith arise. Let the enemies of God be scattered. You hear me tonight? He said I will prepare for you a table in the presence presence of your enemies when you aren't crazy but you have the miracles of God oh, hallelujah Woo. hallelujah hallelujah where are the miracles where are the ones that have gone out 
and we prayed them back. I'm going to ask you, and you've seen them and, and we've had them. But I believe that God wants to send a deluge of people coming back and getting right with God. People are hurting. People are blowing their brains out with drugs. You hear me? People are out on alcohol right now. They don't know what the, what's up from down. People are leaving their kids at home. People will do drugs in front of their innocent children. People will perform sex acts in front of their kids. They're sex crazed out of their mind. This world is a mess. And they're sitting around pointing at us and saying we're mad. No, sir, we're not mad. In fact, we know where the gate's at. And he's calling me by name and he's given us an opportunity to realize that our miracle is at the gate somebody needs to open the door tonight oh yes hallelujah you're crazy you know why they thought she was crazy because she didn't have Peter with her you got that husband that don't love God the way he needs to quit nagging on him Get full of the Holy Ghost. That'll change him. You come in and you be the angel of God that God called you to be. You be the help meet you ought to be. And you'd be surprised what he'll do. He'll quit calling you crazy. And he'll realize that there's already been a miracle. Hallelujah. And it'll change the way he acts to you. That didn't go over good at all. Somebody's got a bad husband or a bad wife. No, sir, you don't have a bad husband. You have the gift God gave to you. And some of you wives ought to kneel down and pray and realize that the answer's already been sent to the gate and say, God, what can I do to get the door open? I believe the help is on its way. I believe my miracle is on its way. Let me go back in and realize that there can be rejoicing because we're not mad. We've got the goods. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to open the gate tonight. Hallelujah. I said somebody needs to open the gate tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how to preach it to you any better. That's all I can tell you. Is somebody needs to get to faith tonight. Some of you, some of you need to realize what you're waiting on and realize God's trying to give it to you. But the latch is on the inside. And you need to step out tonight. And you need to go to the place where you understand that you've been good, called crazy. And you've been getting laughed at. And they've been saying, there ain't no way it's going to happen. But my God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. If you'll seek me early. If you'll knock and keep knocking. And keep seeking and keep searching. You will will find me I'm not mad bro <laughs> I'm not mad I've got the goods I've got the God that can send the miracle to the door I've got the gods that can cause the chains to fall around people's feet hallelujah oh yes hallelujah hallelujah prayer is the petition uh, but faith is the reaction and God's waiting for somebody to stand up and say, I'll react to the fact that I've already put it in the hands of God and I believe He will answer me in my time of need. Yeah. The latch is on the inside. Rhoda had the opportunity to bring the miracle through the door. Would have been different. Rhoda is that lady that missed the chance. That's all we know her as. We don't know of her really before that or really after. Rhoda's the one that missed it. Rhoda's the one that didn't make it. Rhoda's the crazy one that had the opportunity to bring the goods in. But she did not make it happen. I'm telling you tonight, somebody's miracle is at the door. Boy, we've seen the miracles. Hallelujah, I've been there. Listen to me. Why am I preaching here tonight? My grandmother at nine years of age. She was born in 19 and 12. My grandmother, she passed away at 100 years and six months. Brother Brent Greg, you'll remember my grandma Peters. Amen. Just hours. She hadn't talked for days and days and days. Just hours before she went home to be with the Lord. She sat up in the bed and started praying in an unknown tongue. And then she started praying for Chucky boy. <laughs> she hadn't spoken at least, at least a week brother Dathan my aunt who she was staying with called me said you gotta get over here and hear this mom hasn't said a word in English for a week at least and she's up in the bed praying for Chucky boy I'll tell you what she was reaching God one more time she was saying listen here God he's my miracle he's at the gate and I just want to open it up before I leave this world thank God hallelujah she prayed for me hallelujah 
Her and her sister laying in bed, sick, about to die, nine years of age. They were Methodist people. The Pentecost had just come to their town in Willow Springs, Missouri. They were known as the crazy people. They were about to die. One of her uncles said, do you want me to go find those people down there? And my grandpa, my great-great-grandpa said, oh, no, don't do that. said, they're crazy down there. They sprinkle stuff on people. They got powder. That's what they do. He said, yeah, but they have healings. And they got dire enough. They went to the gate. Hallelujah. And they called the Pentecostals in. You hear me? Nine years of age, my grandma and her little sister laying there about to die. And the Pentecostals had the goods. Hallelujah. They laid their hands on them. God raised them up. My grandma would stand up and testify. She said, I'm so glad God filled me with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's what she'd say. And she began to speak in tongues. And when she entered the gates of heaven, she was speaking in an unknown language and calling on the God to help Chucky boy and I feel the anointing tonight because somebody went to the gate oh yes hallelujah 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 my great grandfather was a circuit riding preacher my daddy's been a preacher for 52 years you hear me why because somebody opened the door <laughs> hallelujah what if they'd showed up and couldn't produce you, you tell me, what if they had showed up in my grandma's hospital room and couldn't produce? Well, they didn't have anything, but they knew someone who could do the job. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not trying to put any accolades where they don't belong, but I'm telling you, let us, Brother Tim Laredo, be the men and women of God that we say we are. Let us be faith, tabernacle. Hallelujah. And people will know that they can bring their sick and their maimed and their hurting and their diseased into this house. And they're going to find that we're not mad, but that we will go to the gate and we're going to open it because we believe the miracle has already been been sent to us oh God help us hallelujah hallelujah I was born with a severe bowel problem it's a gross topic but I would go weeks as an infant without a bowel movement my mom would take me in and they would manually help me to have a bowel movement you can only live that way so long. So they scheduled me as an infant for a colostomy, which would have affected my life and those children that I wag around with me and try to keep them from fighting and biting each other's heads off most of the time would not be here. Day before the surgery, a little lady sat in the back of our church, and in some ways she was as much trouble as she was good. I think she had seven or nine kids, and they were all unruly. Most of them still are. Went to the gate. She went to the gate for me. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me tonight. Those eight months of praying, Brother Snow, for this young lady that gave that powerful testimony. Well, aren't you glad you went back to the gate? <laughs> oh, it wasn't there last time. Don't, don't you worry. You go back. It'll be there. I'll tell you right now. She called my mama. She said, God just told me you need to cancel that surgery for Chucky. Because that's who I was, Chucky. She said, you go and cancel that surgery. Thank God for a mom who believed that Rhoda had seen what she saw at the gate and knew there were goods. She called and canceled the surgery. And would you believe at the very moment I was to go under the knife and have a life-altering surgery? God healed me. I made the biggest mess you've ever seen in your life. They tell me, they tell me it's stunk, but it was God bringing a miracle to the gate. And I'm ever for more glad that He did a miracle in my life. I wish somebody would get the faith tonight to believe the miracle is on its way. Uh -huh. My mom had a big cyst come up on her arm. Black and blue and yellow and green and purple it was horrible size of a golf ball up on the higher part of, her, of her, her bicep. It was painful. It got so big and sensitive that she couldn't hold the grandbabies anymore. She'd had them pray many, many times. She was in a women's meeting. I don't know, it had gone maybe a year and a half, two years. And my mom and dad, they're people of faith. Brother Johnson, you're right. They believe in God and His healing power. 
Dad couldn't sit up. He was passing out every time he sat up. Just what, six years ago, we were talking about it the other day. Literally, every time he sat up, he passed out. We laid him out on the tile floor. I said, Dad, you want me to call the paramedics? He goes, that's not what I believe. I know all of you would have said, yeah, give him a call. But daddy didn't do that. He believed God was his healer. He said, I actually feel pretty good on this cool floor down here. Why don't you just pray for me? Amen. I called brothers and sisters and we laid hands on him. We got a couple cell phones out. We called different ministers across the country. We had them praying in Virginia and Oklahoma and Florida, wherever else, Arkansas. They were laying on his belly and there was men of God reaching heaven. And we laid hands on him and pretty soon he got up. He said, I believe I feel better. Never saw a doctor never had a prognosis or a diagnosis and he's healed today because that's the God we serve he's a miracle answering God I want to produce the goods when it's time to produce them hallelujah mom was teaching women's meeting actually you know what it was in the whole service and God spoke to my mom and said bear your arm before the ladies you know my mom she don't bear her elbows, much less her bicep. Her first answer to God was, I don't think I can get this shirt up that high. She told my dad, God's telling me to bear this arm to these ladies. Have them pray for it. Dad said, do it. They got all the ladies over on one side of the church. And she got that thing up just high enough. And they laid hands on it. And began to seek God. About three or four days later, I heard a scream from upstairs. I had no idea what had just happened. Went running up there and my mom was squealing. She said, it's gone. Hallelujah. And today she has a little indention where it used to be. She don't know what happened to it. It didn't pop out. It didn't make a mess. It didn't bleed. It was just gone. Let me tell you, somebody's miracle. And I know this sounds like physical healings, but it doesn't matter what you need tonight. The miracle's at the gate. Don't you go by the gate and forget to open the door. Amen. Don't be mad. Don't be crazy. But let's find God that is He's as good as He says He will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God help us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Courtney, come get ready to sing some more of that. God will move. My dad fell off of a six-foot ladder standing on the top of it. And he, I guess he didn't read the part that says, this is not a step. Fell flat off on his, just right on his tailbone. Wow. And he couldn't move. Somehow he got home to the house and called my brothers and I. And he said, I just need to turn in the bed. But he couldn't stand for you to touch him. We grabbed the sheets of the bed and turned him to get him straightened up in the bed. That's how much pain he was in. And dad believes God's the healer. And he went day after day. And we couldn't hardly get him into the bathroom and back to the bed. He was in horrible pain. Finally, the associate pastors in our church, they said, you know what? We know a chiropractor who's a Christian gentlemen why don't you at least talk to him why don't you at least go see him see if maybe he could put something back in place dad said I'll call him Monday morning dad got him on the phone and the guy said brother he said yes tell me where you're hurt well he said first he's the, the chiropractor said brother I'm sick I can't see you today I, I, I'm, I got the flu so bad I, I can't see you he said but could you tell me where it hurts dad said yeah it's just down there on my lower part of my back he said, can you reach it? Dad said, I believe I can. He said, well, I want you to put your hand on it. So dad got his hand back there and he was ready to figure out which way to push and pull. My dad laid his hand on it and that old man of God began to pray. <laughs> begin to get a hold of God begin to petition the throne of God he begin to go to the gate of God he begin to say listen here I know my profession and my money and all of that stuff but greater still I know he that can send the miracle to the gate amen and I want you to just put your hand on it right now and go to the gate and open the door my dad said he felt something warm go from the top of his head to the soles of his feet he never had another day of back pain he never had another struggle he never had another problem what am I telling you tonight somebody needs a miracle tonight and it's at the gate yes. uh, stand with me oh yes hallelujah hallelujah oh yes oh, hallelujah I 
I want to encourage somebody tonight that you need to get up and go. I'd like to encourage somebody to believe God enough to go. I know my style is a little different than Brother Snow's. And he'll be back soon. But I'm going to tell you right now, the message tonight is, it's at the gate. It's at the gate. <laughs> Can you not see it, folks? Do you not realize what God wants to do? Are you not hungry for what God wants to do in your life? Do you not understand? Are we not hungry? Are we not churning? Are we not desiring the things of God and the answers that we are searching for and are we not hungry enough to realize that we each and every one of us have so many needs that we need God to move in a new and a fresh way and to reach down and do what God can do there's nothing my God cannot do you hear me tonight there's nothing my God cannot do he's a mountain mover hallelujah your answer is at the gate tonight I want to tell you your answers at the gate. Amen. Your answers at the gate. Are you crazy? Are you mad? Are you just, just jabbering? Is it, is it just another day and another opportunity uh, just to, to spend another Sunday and make sure your, your name is marked present here at Faith Tabernacle? Or are you petitioning God to send a miracle that's greater than what you've ever thought of before? Amen. I heard a man preach the other day. He said, if your dreams aren't bigger than yourself, then they're not the dreams of God. I said, well, praise the Lord. He said, you need to dream something great. We're in a dire need. We just built a beautiful building, but we need money. That's just the truth. I said, God, would you send a, a million dollars? Man, that's a big dream. He said, no. He said, I'm believing God to send for himself a billion dollars. I thought, isn't that kind of crazy? No, 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 not with my God. There's not a difference between a million and a billion. You hear me? Hallelujah. There's not a difference between a person who's sick with a sore throat or a person who's, who's conked out on dope. You hear me tonight? There's not a difference in my God's eyes. He can do the miracle. Yes. Will you move? Will you open the gate? Hallelujah. What do you want me to do? You want me to shout? You want me to run? I'll I, well, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to obey God. It may be tomorrow while you're driving down the highway. God may say pick up the telephone and call a certain person. Amen. It may be tomorrow when you walk in and you face that ugly boss that you're just about worn out with. And God will speak to your heart and give you the words of life. And you can speak them at that moment. Amen. It may be when you kneel down beside your bed tonight that God will lead you in a prayer for your unsaved loved ones that you've never prayed before. But God can do something greater than what you've ever asked Him to do. I wish somebody would get hungry to see God move in this house. You say, I know my miracle is at the gate and I'm going to answer it. Somebody needs to step out tonight and make a step of faith and say, I believe it. I believe it right across the front of this church. I believe my miracle is at the gate. I believe my miracle has already been sent. And I'm going to open it. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God to be what He wants. Hallelujah.